Hi everybody, it's John back again with another Model Inbox review. Today we're looking at the Airfix Douglas F4D1 Skyray. This is an image of the, um, the Skyray in the early 1950s. Um, interesting design, the Skyray. It was actually designed in an era when a lot of companies were experimenting with different shapes to find the optimum shape to produce a combat aircraft that was supersonic. Um, and a lot of companies had no idea what the best shape was, so they were just designing anything to try and produce something which was faster than somebody else. And the Skyray is certainly in one of this category of aircraft where it has a very distinctive delta wing that's an unusual form of delta wing because it doesn't have a straight training edge. 90 degree angle training edge to the rest of the airframe it's sort of a swept it's a very unusual almost bird-like um plan form for the wing shape very interesting indeed and of course the aircraft didn't actually have any tail plane but it did have um yeah <laughs> do these surfaces move up and down i'm not 100 percent sure they don't in the model but i'm you know i've never seen them moving up and down there might be other images here and there i'm not sure but they it would explain how the aircraft was as maneuverable as it was because it was quite a maneuverable aircraft um we'll start with the boxing history the airfix kit was originally released in 1976 as a series three um aircraft the kit the kit was molded in white plastic as you'll see in a minute because i've actually got an example of this particular uh boxing um the 1976 release um, and it's it's a nice looking kit actually inside. I, I always was quite impressed with Series Three kits, you know, on the whole from Airfix. I always thought Series Three was sort of a really good Series Two kit and a sort of not good enough to be Series Four kit in terms of size. But Series Four kits, in my opinion, didn't tend to be any better detailed than Series Three kits. They didn't tend to be a better kit. They were just bigger. Um, and the, the Skyray is, a, is quite a nicely detailed, quite nicely laid out kit and it goes together reasonably well. Uh, 1976 from the, uh, the difference between the next image and this boxing is this new logo, which is definitely apparent on my particular boxing, goes through to 1977 and it's exactly the same as the original release, but the new logo has been removed. Um, I do think, yeah, it does. It's exactly the same boxing, even this image on the side of the aircraft is exactly the same and that's the alternative option available for you to model from the kit. You've got the uh, the Marine Corps USS Independence variant and you've got this aircraft which was based um, at Naval Air Station Alabama. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, that's a 77 release from Airfix. Um, then you go into 1980 and US Airfix uh, released this kit in the United States. Um, again, I think it's got different decals for the US market. Uh, the decals are definitely simplified compared to what I have in the box. But the other uh, interesting difference is that the aircraft is moulded in grey plastic here, as you can see. Um, you can see that it has quite a bulbous nose section on this aircraft. You can see that it's not as pointed as you might thought it should have been. Um, but yeah, also an interesting thing here is that you can become a, a, a member of the Airfix Modelers Club free through US Airfix. I think you had to pay a subscription in England most of the time. Um, but that was the US Airfix release. Interesting is that they use an image of the model made up, which is quite nice. I quite like that. Then in 1981, Airfix re-released the, the original boxing format again. Um, at this time, of course, the company was owned by General Mills, um, and it was released with this planetoid label over the front of here. A lot of releases with a planetoid label were actually released in the late 70s, about 1978, but this obviously must have been um, some overspilled stock, so they just released it in 81. And, and 82, of course, the following year, is when the kits were released using the um the format with the the blueprint underneath this interestingly enough <laughs> i've just noticed this this blueprint underneath this aircraft kit is exactly the same blueprint as what comes in the f-16 it's even got locus of something or other b 
written underneath it, which definitely came on the Series 4 release from the F-16. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. Nothing to do with the Skyray, of course, and that proves that they had nothing to do with the, with either kit because, you know, what it, one can pertain to one but not the other, can't it? So they're obviously nothing to do with either. Um, but that was the Douglas Skyray released on the um, the Palatoy uh, um, marketed blueprint boxing there from 1982. Then in 1983, and I think this is the last release of the Skyray that Airfix actually did, it would be nice if hobby if uh, hornby hobbies could release this kit because it's actually it's actually a half decent model of the sky ray it's quite nice but mpc released this in 1983 and it was the last release of the sky ray kit so it was quite a short production run for this particular model and i always thought that was a bit of a shame because it's actually a half decent model we'll just leave you with an image now there those those sections at the back do move I had an idea they must do. They must be part of the control services. You can see them there in the slightly upward position prior to this sky ray taking off on the uh, catapult from an aircraft carrier there. Not sure which aircraft carrier it is, but it wouldn't be hard to find out with a tail code of NF. Um, yeah, so that's that's the sky ray. We'll just pan the camera down and show you this. Really quite a nice little kit. I quite like this little kit. It's quite nice. Um, the box itself, being Series 3, is quite small. Typical size box for Series 3 kits, about the size of my hand, two thirds of my hand wide. Information on the side there adhesive and paints not included, age 9 and adults, there's their address in England. And on the other side, you've got the alternative version um, of the Skyray, which was based at Alameda in California. There we go. Quite nice. Anyway, I'll just open the box and what I'll quickly do here is I just want to put that to one side. There are a number of loose parts in here so I'm just going to dump them into there like that and then leave that piece of the separate. And I'm going to find those two bits and we'll have a look at those two bits in a minute. But first of all, let's have a look at the instruction leaflet. The instruction leaflet is quite typical of this era, 1982's instructions. It has yellowed a little bit, as you can see. It's sort of browned down. This would have originally have been white, but it has browned down a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but on the front cover, you've got stats there in six different languages, information on the aircraft and the stats. You've got general instructions in three different languages. And special instructions in three different languages and you've also got um, the manufacturing codes for the plans. The difference between general instructions and special instructions, um, just in case people are wondering, general instructions is your general run-of-the-mill safety tips and hints and the special instructions are the, the instructions that pertain to this particular model and in this case you're looking at a choice of armament is provided Refer to section 19 and open up all the holes required in the fuselage and wings in section 7 and 9. So obviously with a different armament fit, you're going to have to open up different holes for the different pylons. And you also need to add a nose weight if the aircraft's to stand on its undercarriage. And they're stating it's 25 grams. That's quite a bit of weight needed in this kit. Quite a lot of weight, actually. 25 grams is quite a lot. But there is a lot of plastic behind the main undercarriage landing gear. It's quite, it looks quite a complicated build. Um, there's quite a lot going on here. Um, in section one and two, you're basically building the cockpit bathtub, which also doubles up as the nose wheel gear, um, nose wheel well. And in section three, you're putting the pilot seat bulkhead and the instrument panel into place, and the pilot air sits on the seat. Seat comes in two parts, which is quite interesting. Never seen that before. And in section four, you're putting the nose wheel, oleo and wheel into place. Um, they're giving you the colours. There's quite comprehensive colour IDs to virtually every part you put together on this kit that goes inside the airframe. And then in section five and six, you're basically putting the main undercarriage wheel well into place. There's a bulkhead there, which forms the engine intake 
and the back plate and the inner plate for the air intake and it shows you there in that exploded view what they're supposed to look like when they're fitted in the correct position and it's the same for section 5 you can see that it's quite it's quite a nice touch and also you put the jet pipe into place in section 5 and again it's telling you to paint these two parts different colors specified then in section 7 you're marrying the airframe and the cockpit tub together and they're telling you to put the cockpit canopy in place i don't tend to do that until later and then in section 8 and 9 you're building the wings section 10 you're putting the airframe together it's quite it's quite easy isn't it and then section 11 you're putting the arrestor gear assembly into place section 12 and 13 pertain to the options for the nose wheel whether you want the nose wheel closed or the nose wheel in the open position and then the main landing gear go together in section 14 it looks quite complicated but it actually is quite easy you know there's not a lot of parts there's only four parts of the main undercarriage and the doors and then you've got 15 we have the doors in the closed position quite easy and then section 16 is building the old ordnance and section 17 and 18 is also building all of the ordnance and then in section 19 you're doing the different options for the different ordnance and there's your suggested layouts which is quite nice isn't it you can of course have this clean configuration in which case you wouldn't need to open any of the holes up in either the fuselage or all the lower sections of the wings and then you've got the two decal id option plans and paint guides which um, are quite nice i'm probably going to be building a navy version of this um, i think i'm not sure i'm not 100 sure yet i'll decide later the marine corps version is quite colorful isn't it I'll have a look at that later but you, you can see you know it's it's quite a nice instruction leaflet and it the, there looks quite a lot going on there the decals the decals um it's quite a large decal sheet actually there's not a huge number of decals on the sheet <laughs> but um what you've got here has actually lasted it stood the test of time quite well because the backing film is quite clear the decals look in pretty good register um so I'm quite pleased with those. Even the stars and bars look in really good condition. Quite impressed with those. They look quite nice, don't they? So that looks quite good too. The actual decals themselves, um, they are quite pronounced. But then this is an 82 release. I wouldn't expect them to be cartograph. Um, you get a stand with this kit. These are quite collectible. This is quite a large stand. Series 3 and 4 kits had quite large stands. Um, and these are quite marketable, especially the ones that are printed and embossed with the company's logo. You can see the scroll type logo there. So this stand would have dated back to pre-1973 when the stands, um, well actually pre-1976 when the stands and Airfix as a company logo was still a scroll and not a circular planetoid sort of logo. But those stands are quite marketable and they're, you know, they're, they're quite collectible as well. The cockpit canopy on this kit, I'll be honest with you, it looks pretty much run of the mill to me, but it is relatively clear and it's nicely framed. But it's quite thick, as you can see, it's quite thick there. You can see that, but it is quite nicely framed, and I think that will actually paint up quite nice. But it's going to distort quite a bit of the uh, stuff that's going on inside the canopy. There are quite a number of sprues on this kit. Um, you've got printed on the inside of this wing. I'm hoping you can see that. Airfix, uh, Skyray Airfix Products 1977. Which is quite nice. You can see it there. But it's relatively flash free, isn't it? There's not much flash on this kit at all. The sidewinders look quite nicely moulded. There's those funny little moving parts. Part of the jet pipe assembly. The, uh, the wheel there is quite nicely moulded. I'm hoping it's going to come into view quite nicely. It might not because that is in the way. If I remove that, it might come into focus a bit better because the camera's trying to... There we go. The camera was trying to focus on what was behind it rather than what's right in front of it. Cameras are pretty stupid like that, you know. Um, the second sprue. This is an upper wing surface, which is really quite nice. It's got some nice panel lines on here. They are raised, of course, but they're quite nice. 
And I think you guys who accentuate panel lines, I think you'd have a nice time with this. This kit is really quite, quite nice indeed. I like the look of this quite a lot. Some bits and bobs going on in there. Pilot seat doesn't look too much to write home about. But as I said before, it has an ejection seat back panel which goes on the top. I've never seen that before. Quite nice. Air intake splitter plates there. Quite nice. Um, the main undercarriage wheel wells. They're actually quite detailed as well, aren't they? Look. Quite nice. Undercarriage oleos. A little bit spindly, but they are they are quite good. You can see the detail on the wheel wells there. They're, they're actually quite nice. Quite impressed with the parts on this kit. It does look like Airfix have gone to town a little bit with this particular model. Um, this sprue is not a, really an awful lot to write home about. This sprue it's mainly pylons, a little bit of ordnance and a wheel. And there's the arrestor hook there, which, yeah, it's just a V part, isn't it? Not a lot to go on there. The jet pipe, this is one thing that I was a bit surprised about. The jet pipe has no detail in the bottom there at all, which I think is a bit of a shame. Um, you've got a main drop tank there, which is quite nice. Drop tank half, don't need to show you the other side. This is the, um, the cockpit tub and nose wheel well. You can see the detail on the nose wheel well. It's quite nice, isn't it? The cockpit tub on the top. That has all the parts that goes on the top, so that's quite nice too. Another drop tank here, which you don't really need to see. Um, that's one of the bombs, bomb half there. Don't really need to worry about that too much. Um, we've seen those two as well, so you don't need to worry about those. That's the instrument panel cover. That's... Um, yeah, run of the mill, isn't it? Not much to write home about that. One of the doors, you don't need to see that. You've got one of these famous late 70s, 80s jet pilot figure. Doesn't seem to matter whether the aircraft's British, American, Soviet, they're all the same. <laughs> the people who make the um, oxygen masks for, for um, pilots who fly aircraft covered by airfix. They must be making a bomb, mustn't they? And then you've got the main fuselage half itself. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put these two together just to show you something that I think could be a, a problem that might need to be jigged in quite a bit. Um, but I don't think it's going to be a problem when it is jigged. The actual tail fin itself doesn't want to sit square, but if you jig it, it, it goes together all right. So that's not going to be a problem. The kit fits really nicely. As you can see there, you're not going to have an issue putting this thing together. And it's quite an unusual shape. The actual plane itself is quite unusual. Um, so, yeah, but the surface panel detail. I'm going to show you quickly the surface panel detail on this kit because it is actually quite nicely crafted. You can just about make out the fueling lines and bits and bobs that are going on there. The raised panel lines, they're very faint and they're not overdone at all, which I think is quite a nice touch from Airfix. I'm quite impressed with that. So... I don't think this kit is actually that bad. I think as jet aircraft go, I think the Airfix Skyray is actually quite nice. What I'll do now is I'll quickly go through the gum. For, it's not that much, to be honest with you. But I have included all of the options for different scales and the options and costs, because there aren't that many for the Skyray as a subject. The Airfix kit is of the Douglas F4D1 Skyray. It's Series 3 with a serial number of 03027 mash dash four. It's molded in 72nd scale and its original release date was 1976. There are decals for two versions. One is of an F4D1 Skyray from VMF 155 Silver Eagles with the US Marine Corps based upon the USS Independence in 1957-64 and the second is of a Douglas F4D1 Skyray from VF213. These are the Black Lion's squadron um, serving the US Navy and they're based formally on the USS Lexington in 1958 to 1960 but they did do a land tour 
um, on the naval base at Alameda. Um, so, yeah. The kit comprises 70 parts on four white plastic sprues and one part on a clear plastic sprue, totaling 71 parts in total. The model should measure seven and a half inches long by about six inches in span, and it should sit two and three quarter inches high on its undercarriage. Now, the op options and costs um, are quite interesting. In 144 scale, there's a company called Mini Wing, and they produce an F4D1 Skyray for about £20. It's quite nice. Also, the Tokiwa Aircraft Create option of the F4D1 Skyray, which retails for about £22, is equally quite nice as well. They're quite nice uh, reproductions, even though they're in a very small size. Sanwa do a 1125th scale kit of the Skyray. No pricing is available on that. And Comet build a quite a crude 189th scale version of the F4D1 Skyray. Um, which I think was uh, reboxed by... No, sorry, no, it wasn't reboxed. Uh, it just stood alone. Frog... Uh, sorry, it was reboxed. It was reboxed by Frog and Temco. I've got no pricings available on these, but they both reboxed it as an F4D1 Skyray. In 188th scale, the F4D1 Skyray was produced by Aurora. This kit is quite rare and quite uh, difficult to get hold of and commands a £35 price tag. And this kit was reboxed in a combi set of an F4D1 Skyray and a Sky Knight um, by Adder. And they rebox that kit, and this kit is quite collectible as well, and usually fetches between sixty and seventy pound. In one seventy second scale, you have of course the Airfix release of the F four D one Skyray. This model release usually sells about five to twenty four pound. Hawk also did quite a crude model of the Skyray. No pricing available on that. And Tamiya do quite a nice F four D one Skyray for about five to thirty two pound. Airfix Tome re-released the Airfix boxing of the Skyray, no pricings available on that. MPC also did a rebox of the Skyray from Airfix, no pricings on that. The Hawk model was found in the Tester's Skyray boxing and the Tester's Hawk Skyray boxing, no prices available on that. And of course US Airfix released the Airfix kit, reboxed as an F4D1 Skyray and no pricings available on that. In 167th scale, Hobby Time did an F4D1 Skyray, no pricings available on that. And in 150th scale, Murasan did an F4D1 Skyray, which was also reboxed by UPC, and I've got no pricings available on either of those two either. In 148th scale, there was a company called KMB Allen, and they did an F4D1 Skyray, no pricings on that, but it's quite nice. Lindbergh did a really terrible F4D1 Skyray, but this kit does still fetch 20 to £30. And Tamiya do quite a nice release of the Skyray in 48 for about 15 to £50. Lindbergh and Nikamisa, they released the Lindbergh kit, as did Microscale. They both released the Lindbergh kit of the Skyray, no pricings available on either of those two. 145th scale, Hobby Time did a multimedia kit. I must stress that this model contains white metal parts as well as resin cast and injection moulded, and the airframe, I think, is vac form. Um, and this kit, and again, there's no pricings available on that, but I'm guessing it's probably quite expensive. Um, the best model I've ever seen of an F4D1 Skyray is a resin kit produced by Fisher Model and Pattern, and that's released in 132nd scale and has a price tag of about £260. Conclusions. This is another mid-70s Airfix release that looks pretty good. This is a model of a plane built during a time in aviation when designers weren't really sure what airframe shape would work best. Not too many options in 72nd scale even today, and the Airfix option got reasonable reviews then, and it still gets good reviews from pro community now. Raised panel lines seem to be fine, and they're not too apparent, and there seems to be plenty of detail going on with a reasonably detailed cockpit, nice wheel hubs, and a good amount of ordnance to fit under the wings. Kits worthy of note are the Tamiya offerings in 48th and 72nd scale, but the Airfix 72nd scale kit still has a lot to offer. Hope this video has been of, a, of use to you, um, and if there's any queries, questions, pop them in the com comments slip boxes underneath. I'll try and get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, I hope all your modelling uh, pro pro projects are running very well. I'm sorry I'm going a bit doolally tonight. Um, and I hope everything's running smoothly and 
most of all, I hope you're all having fun. Let's stay safe out there for now, and uh, I'll get back to you with the next one. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.